My name is Issa Lampa and I'm the director of the Feitler Center for Academic Inquiry here at the Smart Museum at the University of Chicago. I'm also deputy director overseeing all of academic affairs. My name is Barrett Ness and I'm the assistant curator of academic engagement here at the Smart Museum. The Smart Museum of Art was founded in 1974 with a gift from the Smart family. Uh, it is an encyclopedic fine arts museum for and at the University of Chicago. The Feitler Center for Academic Inquiry was founded in February of 2018, so just a little over a year ago. I am its founding director. The gift uh, from the Feitler family really made the Feitler Center for Academic Inquiry possible. I always like to say that the Feitler Center is really a fully functioning department within the Smart Museum, and we oversee all of the Smart Museum's university-level education programs. Our mission is to promote and support teaching and learning at the University of Chicago across all fields and disciplines. We think about how to accomplish that goal in three ways. Um, we offer teaching services, we offer help teaching in the galleries, we have an education study room where we support hundreds of classes per year. The second way we support that mission is by establishing student research opportunities for a range of, a range of students at different levels. Our third area of programming we refer to as curricular exhibitions. So we have um, five or more exhibitions in partnership with faculty in development at any given time. Many of them result from classes and some of the exhibitions um, are actually used for the teaching of classes. And in fact, today we're here to tell you about a very specific kind of curricular exhibition that we've just started doing for the core curriculum at the University of Chicago called Smart to the Core, Embodying the Self. And this exhibition we curated together, Barrett Ness and I. And there were a couple of things on our minds. Uh, first of all, we're a small museum. We have 10,000 square feet of gallery space. We have one classroom. Half of our gallery space is devoted to large public facing exhibitions. And yet we have outsized ambitions through the Feitler Center for Academic Inquiry that we will one day reach a place where um, many, if not most, of the undergraduates who spend four years here at the University of Chicago will come away having had a meaningful, close encounter with a work of art. So what does that mean to us? That means that we need to be looking for the moments in the curriculum across at this university where we can reach the most students at the most time. The core curriculum means that for the first two years of your undergraduate years, you and all your peers are reading the same things, taking the same courses. The University of Chicago's core has year-long course sequences, and there's one of them called Self, Culture, and Society, which is a social sciences core course sequence that includes 500 students and being taught in small seminar-style conversations by 33 different faculty members. I'm John Kelly. I am the uh, Christian W. McCower Professor in anthropology and the college. I have been involved in the core curriculum as pretty much as long as I've been a professional. Three years ago, I agreed to become the chair of Self, Culture, and Society, uh, which was because the, uh, the uh, really a giant, uh, Moish Postone, ran the course for 30 years. And now I'm in his wake picking up the course and deciding what do you do with it in the 21st century. Uh, we have to globalize it and we have to connect it to the real 21st century and it's a challenge that I'm very happy to entertain at this point in my career. The project began when the Smart Museum came to us, us being uh, Ann Beale, my co-chair and myself, but we'd been talking about representation and how we teach representation for quite a while in lots of different guises. When the opportunity arose, that was the first thing I thought of was Here's a topic we're already considering. We now have about uh, two generations of artists who are thoroughly conscious of the politics of representation in this way. 
that's typical of the 20th century. But do I know what they have been doing? I do not. Does the Smart Museum staff? Yes, they do. So we chose to go with Self, Culture, and Society as our first experiment, in part because it is the largest of the core courses. It is also the oldest at the University of Chicago. And then finally, its topic fits so beautifully with the visual arts. The students are reading Freud, they're reading Fanon, they're reading de Beauvoir, they're reading Judith Butler, um, they're reading Edward Said's Orientalism. Um, in other words, they're reading all of these theories about the construction of selfhood through the lenses of race and ethnicity, gender and sexuality, and intersectional identities. Our checklist started to naturally fall in place around artworks that would, that would connect so specifically with those texts that social science faculty would be able to see immediately connections. Ah, I see exactly how I can teach Jillian Waring's self-portraits around Freud, or ah, I see exactly how I can teach Melvin Edwards' sculpture around Franz Fanon's text. We pulled this show together in a quick hustle. Um, we had about six months between solidifying it with our faculty partners, getting Anne and John on board, to when it opened. Which, for an exhibition that includes a number of outside loans that um, we're drawing from the museum's own permanent collection, but we're also relying upon um, uh, private collectors, galleries, we even have institutional loans from the Art Institute. We were really relying upon our broader network to make this happen. Um, it really couldn't have happened in the same way with this particular timeline um, without everyone being really excited about being able to have an exhibition for teaching in this way. Smart to the Core, Embodying the Self brings together about 30 artworks, all artists from the 20th and 21st centuries. Major majority of the artists are from uh, the US and Europe, um, but we also have artists from China, Japan, South Africa. To name just a few of those artists, we have Cindy Sherman, Paul and Poggy Sapuya, Hank Willis Thomas, Kathy Opie, Melvin Edwards, and others. The exhibition is essentially an identity show, in other words, um, but it was important to us when we were uh, thinking about how to structure the exhibition that we not end, end up with static or essentializing identity sections. All of the works in this introductory part of the exhibition are using objects through which to construct the self. The second section, which we call Our Others, deals with how artists are constructing their images of self through the lens of primary relationships, be those love relationships, relationships between parents and child. And then the third section is called The Masquerade, bringing together artists in the 20th and 21st centuries who are thinking about masquerade strategies as a way of um, exploring alternative identities within the space of the artwork, whether those alternative identities have to do with um, a form of drag, um, both male and female drag, or whether it is donning um, 19th century costume to push back on images of black female bodies in the antebellum self, as Ayana V. Jackson is doing. Our fourth and final section is called Our Histories, and here we're looking at artists who are taking on broader historical narratives. So Hank Willis Thomas engaging with the civil rights movement, Carrie Mae Weems looking into historic collection of daguerreotypes at Harvard University that were taken of African Americans on plantations. Our main primary goal in designing the exhibition is making sure that the exhibition's checklist resonated with the individual themes, texts, and goals of the self-culture and society sequence. But we wanted to do it in a way that made it still feel legible to our broader publics. We didn't want this to feel like a niche show just for that very specific academic audience. One exciting thing that an academic museum can do is it can open the window 
onto the university um, for those who are not part of the university's community. This is a space where uh, our broader publics can get a peek in and see what is a seminar for self-culture society really like? What types of things are they talking about, reading about? We have an amazing programming team here at the Smart Museum who collaborated with us to use either individual artworks or the overall theme of the show to build pu public programs that merged our academic and broader communities. Um, some instances of these felt very typical. We had an academic panel talking about photography and self-portraiture. We partnered with the Film Studies Center on a whole series, again, inspired by the exhibition. And then we had student-based programs that allowed us to get a bit experimental. We decided that we would give it full treatment as a real exhibition, which means we have a full title wall, as you see behind me. We have section text describing each of the sections of the show. We have object labels. We have um, hired a, a designer to work with us on a graphic identity. We've really thought through the sight lines of the space, um, and we've been thoughtful about including a reading area in the center of the gallery, where many of the books that students read in this course are displayed and it's great to see when classes take place in the gallery that students will actually pick up the books to remind themselves of a phrase from Simone de Beauvoir that they may need to talk about the Cindy Sherman photographs on the wall. We recognize that there was a barrier to an exhibition that's like this and to an approach and method of teaching with objects, especially for those who are teaching in the social sciences division. Um, this isn't an art history class, um, and we're working with some people who maybe have never thought about teaching with objects as part of their own practice. And so one of the things that we offer is a co-teaching opportunities where faculty don't feel alone. Um, they regularly meet with one of the staff members here at the center to ahead of time go over the thoughts and goals and lesson planning for the visit. We're also on hand and part of that discussion. So while they're at the museum, they have an expert who is there who can help facilitate and guide student looking and discussion. I'm asking the students this quarter, and in fact on an assignment I hand out tomorrow morning, to write about the representation of masculinity. We made it a particular challenge to find works of art that challenge the question of what masculinity is and what it does. Right behind me is, is Gang Zhang Yi's uh, uh, masterwork representing the historical and cultural ambiguity of a self where uh, phrenology is involved, hand reading is involved, a series of scenarios, photos of him in action, people in the street claiming authority. Hank Willis Thomas, the uh, artist of our I Am A Man, uh, there is something about the forms of power marshaled in the control of those canvases that's got to, to quote a famous line that, that Barack Obama emphasized, the fierce urgency of the now, but also something that's utterly timeless about what do you mean a man. I, I myself was extremely pleased with how the representation of masculinity and the representation of women uh, were both fundamental issues throughout the room, and you're always in sight of one when looking at the others, and I think that makes it uh, intrinsically powerful. We have seen groups of students traveling from piece to piece in small groups, um, exploring different questions in connection with their readings. Kent Monkman, the queer native Canadian artist um, whose um, acrylic on canvas painting on the next wall has been the subject of several small group conversations by students where we see them very spontaneously drawing connections to Edward Said's Orientalism and thinking about the pseudo-ethnographic gaze. Or they talk about Michel Foucault's ideas about pleasure and power. Uh, or they talk about um, Judith Butler's ideas about all gender as performance when they look at Kent Monkman's alter ego standing in the center of, the, of his own painting uh, named uh, Miss Chief Eagle Testicle dressed in high heels. Faculty who've been teaching with this show um, have been 
I'm happy to say, so eager to teach with objects and artworks for the first time that they're already asking us what they're going to do next year when the show isn't around. Uh, my name is Jessica Kurzane and I taught a section of readings and world literature in the core curriculum. It was my first time bringing a class to the museum. There were a number of, I think, really profound moments in bringing the class here. I wanted to talk about this particular piece, um, the Tony Tassett piece, the Pieta, which I think is really, uh, was really helpful for my class in a number of ways. One was that we read Alison Bechdel's Fun Home, which is about the relationship between a daughter and her father and how she thinks through who she is becoming in relationship to her father um, and his life story. To what extent is her relationship with him sort of embroiled in the literature that they read and even predicated upon that literature, are they acting out certain kinds of scenes? So this is um, a depiction of, um, of the artist with his son staged as a kind of classic um, um, figure. And so there's, there's a relationship there between sort of literary texts that make allusions and that draw upon previous traditions and artistic texts, artistic objects that do the same, and also thinking about the relationship between the self and the child or the self and the parent and the way that um, that relationship is so formative to what an individual is. The self is not just exclusive to a person's, a one person's body, but uh, is produced socially and relationally. So it was um, a really productive object to think about. Ultimately, not only has this museum become much more responsive to the teaching needs of the university, I think we're also in a place now to say we have the capacity um, to, to, to change the curriculum at the university by getting more and more teaching with art into all of the disciplines. Smart to the core, it seems to me, is a lot more revolutionary than it sounds in the very conception of what a campus art museum is for. It is very much speaking to the university community about its own studies. It's not attempting to be a, a university campus museum that rivals the, the great museums and is a mini Guggenheim or a mini Louvre or something. It's instead being what only a university museum can be, which is something that participates in the dialogue of knowledge among uh, the students and the faculty so what we get then is an art museum that's part of the curriculum of a university, not merely an adornment on it or some kind of showpiece. I'm David Levine. I am the Addie Clark Harding Professor in Germanic Studies, Cinema and Media Studies, and I chair the Committee on Theater and Performance Studies. I'm also the Senior Advisor to the Provost for Arts. So in, in order to figure out what the Feitler Center contributes to the university. Maybe I could start with my own relationship to art museums when I was in college. So my experience of art museums was that they were a place that talked at me. The thing that seems so exciting about the Feitler Center is that it imagines itself and has constituted itself as a space of dialogue. So rather than this being a one-way conversation where I am the recipient of a curator's or an institution's knowledge, what seems so exciting is that we're convened here in the galleries to engage art and engage art not necessarily just in the way in which art seeks to posit its own meaning, but in the dialogue between the way we as a group of students and professors and thinkers think and the way in which it thinks with us. So that encounter, unpredictable and exciting to my mind, doesn't just do great things for the University of Chicago. I think it does great things for what a museum can be on a university campus. What do you get in return? You get students into your galleries who are excited to be there, trying to engage art that speaks to them and inviting them in turn to speak to the art. 
as we look at how students are working in the gallery, it's clear that it is an offering a moment for them to have conversations that link theories to elements of their everyday lives, elements of their contemporary moment. And I think uh, the degree to which the museum can continue to be that place, to have those conversations, I think that's wonderful. We certainly hope that what we're able to offer today um, inspires others to experiment with, with academic and curricular exhibitions.